I often believe I'm far from transparent with my supporters. My personal life is almost swept to the side, you know? <laughs> I never refer to my supporters as fans because I personally believe there's a big difference between a fan and a supporter, but that's not something I'll go into just right now. In this documentary, or a mini documentary as I've just been saying, I've decided to go out of my comfort zone, become a little more vulnerable with my supporters, become a lot more personal. This mini documentary here is to present my journey from when I've started until now, letting you know who I am, how I grew up, and briefly what I went through to get a greater understanding of who David Bomi is, even though in the grand scheme of things, what I've gone through is far deeper and far immense and far more complex to understand, which is why I don't go through all so much. I hope my supporters truly understand this side of me and why I never make things all so personal. So from here, all I can say is enjoy the show. Right now, you lot, I'm throwing it way back. And right now, we've come to we're all the way in Chinkford and shit. We're all the way in Chinkford and shit. This is where I went primary school. Then this went primary school. So, pan to this fat cunt over here. Bro, what the nostalgia here? You don't understand. It's a nostalgia. I ain't been in in years, though. My niggas, listen, today, you know, the, the, the funny voice is gone. I ain't gotta do that no more. Feds ain't watching for man no more. So, listen, let me, let me just show you quickly. Over here, I finished. I think I went here with my cousin Brian, shout out to Brian, went pro on footy. Brian went pro on footy. And you know, well if we go back here you'll see this spot right here used to be called Chinkford Hall Primary School. And this is where David started. You know when I started here, you know when I lived in Poland for a couple of years, because Polish was my first language. When I started here, I used to cry all the time because Man had no clue what no one was saying to man. That's the W11, that's the bus I had to take. Every morning for school. My mum literally went around the corner. This used to be called Chinkford Hall, but shout out to Miss Davies. He taught me the ways. She used to bang Mad F. Now she got bagged, they had to change the whole name. It was a bad spirit. Let's just walk slightly, 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 slightly up. Slightly. What's this a Saturday? It's a bit empty. I'm hoping ain't no one gonna see me in it. I ain't trying to have a conversation with these teachers and that. When I was late, I used to go in there and shit. I used to cry. They used to bring me to that front desk because they had to call up my mum. Cause man, I can't lie. I only ha I only learned how to speak English when I was like four or five years old. As embarrassing as that saying, David's one of the foreigners like you lot. Even though I was born here, I lived in Poland when I started. Over there, if you pre that playground, bro, they ain't changed it. Government, Boris Johnson, please. Patting, patting the funds for the school. You see those tables in there? Go, hey. Check the tables in there. The tables, the playground, all of it. These niggas ain't changed nothing since man grew up here, bro. This is Chickford, bro. This is where all the. I think, how many black kids were here? I think I was the only black kid. I was basically out because my cousin Brad was a baller. Shout out to Poland. He's verified now playing Poland national team. But that shout out to you. I ain't gone clear like you yet. But I'm trying to be like you look. If you had this bus stop here, man, used to always listen. It was a little, it was a little hint and trick. If I couldn't be able to talk to all that that way down there, the bus used to take me all the way around the block and that. I used, to, but my mom wouldn't let me go nowhere. You know, my mom was so protective of me. That's probably the reason why I'm not in a bando right now with all the trapping lot, you know, making fuck knows what they make. If I was hungry, I'd get a scummy one from that shop right there. And this was how long ago? This is like 10 years ago, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's fucked how shit has changed over time, especially just starting here. You know, this is what, when I moved, I used to live around the corner. That's why I started in Chinkford Hall, but then I moved to Stowe. So that's the next spot I'm going to take you to. Wolf from Stowe. That's where I grew up.
Remember when I was saying, you know what am I? I'm gone clear cousin Brian. Literally right now we're chilling in this crib. Can't disclose the location too tough. Do you know what I'm saying? Because my man is clear. I'm still in the trenches, you get it? But <clears throat> growing up, literally, obviously if I was having a hard time at home because it's literally my mum's brother and that, let's say I didn't, because as I was saying, I grew up like in a nicer part of life then I ended up kind of falling into the, 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 cause obviously my dad passed away. So I'd come here to get chill if I weren't comfy or fucking with and stuff like that. And it was just a cool place to chill cause obviously at the end of this family and who else would you want to be? apart from with family and it's just good that they always took me in especially because I weren't always the closest to them you know what I'm saying like if I'm going to be honest they weren't the closest like but they always took me in da, 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 da. I was always close on my dad's side but anytime I was like yo I'm going to the Brian will take me here yo let's park off da, da, they got this they got that I'd have access to like shit like Bro, come to a point where man didn't like. I always had an Xbox on that man. You know when you want to play any games on Xbox, bro. You need Xbox Live and that man didn't have that, bro. Like, what man be making an avatar? Like, do you get it? Take me here and it's like, and I feel like all the shit like this all the time, like, with proper like. It's just like I always wanted more. You know how some man like <clears throat> they grow up and ends and that like, they never see the finer things until it's too late. Like I always always had access whether it was my friends or family, access to just little things like this that, yo, man always wanted more, man always wanted this, man always wanted that. And just like, little things like that. Believe me, bro. Just like, if you're going through a mad patch or you're young and you ain't got too much dosh, you know what I'm saying? Reach out to people, don't feel like a beg. Don't go in the UK culture, you feel like a beg where you wanna go to your friends with money or your, or your, or your family with money the dirt and you wanna access certain things that you can't at home. Because bro, believe me, this will give you a whole outlook on life and will teach you things and just give you experiences that you won't feel comfortable. You always want to do more. You're not going to, like some nights, instead of going to a motor view, you want to read that book that your friend told you because that's what he did and that's what put him there. Do you get it? Believe me. I know what I'm talking about, by the way. Because if you put my odds together, when you really watch this whole thing, the, all the odds, like, believe me, I know what I'm talking about. So... This is what I want to all my supporters to know that, like, please, like, try get a hold of the best things you can before it's too late, before you hit something in your life where it's too late, like. You see the spot here, yeah? This is potentially the most treacherous part of my, man's life. That like, fam. Like, bro, I went here for like, what, two years? And I did A levels by the way, and I got A B B. I just see bad people crying and celebrating that. My only accomplishment was just actually getting out there alive. And <laughs> <laughs> bro, Adam, these are grades that people just live for. Like, yeah, this is me, made it. I was trying to get out of here. This quite shit. I think when I started, I wanted to be a lawyer. I don't think I'm a lawyer right now. Imagine I'm. Imagine you walk into your courtroom and your lawyer comes in, fully tatted. I think the only place on my on my body ain't no tattoos on my face. You're not feeling too safe, are you? When I started at college, I had no tattoos. You're not stressed, us see college stress, UK college stress in the trenches. This is really trenches. I can't lie, don't go here. The only reason I went here is because those girls. Once I was on with every girl, man, kind of left this. Like my attendance finished at like forty-two percent or something. But I did finish with the ABB. If you're in a genius like man, don't don't take that approach. But I'm just giving you my my personal insensitive, insensitive. Insensitive. On my approach, if you ever want to go to this college and you live in the East London now, obviously I had or live around here or well, nowhere near, but when this used to be five minutes from our crib, that's my man's only choice, isn't it? See right now what I'm doing and I'm taking you down to, and this is pretty personal to me, which is one of the most, significant parts of my life. This is like over here, it's a dad that, a dad, it's a crib which my dad almost bought and I lived in as a young guy and literally I went up, went up for, I was telling you last night, I was suffering. Today, this is the road where I went literally from working class to upper middle class, you know what I'm saying? My dad did his thing and I gotta appreciate my dad every time. RP, Big Boss Ben, 
Shout out to you, I know you got them holes up in heaven as well. But then, as it, was it year 2008, my dad passed in 2006. Literally, Dennis over here. Literally, little bro was three months old. This sounds like a music video right now, do you get it? it sounds like poetry and shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, this is the road I grew up on. My school's, lit, my secondary school, this is down the road and I grew up here. And then when he passed, I was about nine years old, 10 years old. Got, bro, Nick, you got kicked out, bro. And it's fucked because a lot of people think for whatever reason, because I never talk about my life. A lot of people think that man grew up in a rich parent's so home. They're like, ah, oh, this nigga don't do no fashion over promos. Or the, how this nigga do what he does? And it's like, people think man grew up in a rich home. This what I want to do. I want to let you know that, yo, like man, if anyone struggled, that's why I've been struggling harder than you, my guy. And it's like, I grew up on this road, I got kicked off. I mean, I'm about to take you literally to my next home, but this is the road, literally all down here. I don't want to show off. I don't want to show off the exact house. It's one of these lot, but I don't want to show you the exact house. Sorry, because obviously anyone living there, they don't want people to know where they be living, but it's the road I grew up on. When my dad passed, shit kind of went to real shit after being good for a period of time, and shit got hard, you know what I'm saying? But listen, you lot, come with me. I'm about to take you to where I lived. Literally about half my life. This is about 10 minutes away. Come follow me. And I'm listening, when I tell you this is the main block, which I grew up, I was, I've always been a sweetheart. Unfortunately, I've never been on the gang stuff. I'm a sweetheart. I can just about do 10 push up, but this is, when I say this is the block man grew up on, do you get it? With my mum, my little brother, my single mum, unfortunately. Mum's about to it, she can't get a man. Anyway, I grew up on here, shout out to Atley Terrace. And bro, man was here for like, bro, nine, 10 years, do you get it? Nine, 10 years, something like that. Something like that, and you see me, bro. This is the block that made me, do you get it? Because I moved here from the previous, which was Queenswood Avenue, which is like one of the most expensive roads in Walthamstow, to one of the poorest roads on Walthamstow. But growing up, I never knew like, man was poor, did you get it? Man never knew like, like when I actually analyze it as an adult, like yo, me and my mama, like we grew up broke. But guess what? It's like, when I've always seen it, it's all about perspective, you know what I'm saying? At no point can I ever say I've gone hungry. If I start rapping ever and I say I've been hungry, that's a lie, man's never been hungry. Man's always been good. My husband had food on my back. I've always had everything I needed. Do you get what I'm saying? But this is literally, I never felt like I fit, fit in. And the only thing was that kept me going in this area was that little cage over there that I just assumed me doing a few free throws in because I love sport, I love football and shit like that. So you know, you know when them, you know when them I say like, what do, what do, what do gang, gang back members do? They like claim their ends in it. I'm not claiming these ends. I'm not a gangbanger, by the way. Leave me alone. I just had to sip cocktails with beautiful women. But I can't lie, this was like, out of any block that my heart sat, this, this is the block that it sat, do you know what I'm saying? So I grew up, and luckily I was able to move from ends and shit like that. And it's like, what, this nigga grew up over here? Who is David Bummy? <laughs> oh, you thought I was gonna go back into who David Wumi is, something serious. What did I want to get home, sorry. I just want to do some quick transitions, sorry. You know what, you look. Let me stop playing around. Let me be real, let me be, let me put the jokes aside. Let me tell you who David Wumi is. So to those that have made it to the end of this documentary, the answer of to who David Wilmy is, is that there is no answer. Everyone will have a different interpretation or a different image of me illustrated in their head. Therefore, the only person that can literally answer who David Wilmy is, is you, the viewer. Whether well, you just stumbled across my profile, my page or any of my social medias, or you've just showed love briefly, 
for the years or months, whatever it may be. You tell me who David Bomb is to you. Comment it down below. DM me personally if you don't want to get your views and images across. I'd love to hear it all. Because at the end of the day, no matter what you think who David Bomb is, guess what? You're right. Ha, ha, ha.